I'm really sorry that I can't be at the event in person tonight, but one of the great ironies, perhaps, is that I am not able to attend because of the gift and the fulfillment at this stage of my life that Sidney Berger, Doc, gave to me. I'm working as an actor in Prague right now, which would never have happened if it hadn't been for Sidney. I remember he gave me my first professional paying job as an actor, and instead of getting a call from the production, Team, he left his office and came and found me in the costume shop and he came up to me and said, hey, kid, you want to do a play with me? The dog to me was one of those gentle spirits. He, um, he, there was so many theater grades that sort of filtered through him and knowing him, you got to know such a wealth of theater history. Uh, whenever we went through the theater office, he would always see Tiger and I, and he would salute us. How you doing, sir? And we'd salute back, even though very clearly, like, none of us really had much <laughs> military bearing. But it was just one of those things. And I think it was his own humorous way of, of having um, rapport with the crew. Sid and I worked together for 30 years or more. Um, and, uh, you know, I always, I always could count on Sid for good counsel, for, for friendship, for... Uh, being there when you need it, and you know, hopefully, I could do the same thing for him. I miss it. Early one morning, probably 5 a.m., I was in the shop smoking a joint, and Sydney walked in to the shop and stopped and looked at me and said, You know, you're not supposed to be doing it. And I looked at Sid and I said, And you know, you're not supposed to be here this early. loved his students. He loved his students as much as he loved Shakespeare. And he loved Shakespeare in a way that was, uh, it, I never knew anybody who loved Shakespeare as much as he did. Sometimes uh, in my life today, especially working on Shakespeare, I'll be trying to figure out what, what it, something means or uh, how a moment works on stage, either as an actor or a director. And Sidney will pop into my mind and he'll kind of be going, uh, I don't know, sure? And it's, it's almost like he's, he's a little conscience for me going, you need to get this right, because Shakespeare deserves it, and I deserved it, and you deserve it. I was out with Doc in my capacity as the academic advisor in the car, and I can't remember where we were going to, but it was here in Houston. And he said, do you know where we're going? And I said, well, if you give me the address, I'll try and work it out. This is before GPS, etc. Anyway, he said to me, what if we get lost? I said, Doc, it will only be the blonde leading the blind. He said, you're fired. And, and I carry him, as, as, as anybody who leaves us at, at, at a point in our lives when they, they move on, uh, we carry them with us. And in some respects, there is this idea of them being sort of completely around you at whatever moment you need them. So you can talk to them at any time and refer to them and even ask for guidance. And Sydney's one of those people that, you know, when I feel lost and, and you know, and there's an acting question that I, I you, know, you know, how would I approach this? Sydney, I need your help, you know, and whether or not that it's just something that it sparks in my imagination, I always find an answer. This is a story that Doc liked to tell. Well, one year he went to Italy, and this was when Edward Albee was here. And so Edward went with him. Someone who was in charge got um, a, a, an audience with the Pope for all of the um, members who had come over. And Doc just, oh, just scratched his head about that. He just felt like he, as a Jew, shouldn't go meet the Pope. He just felt uncomfortable about it, et cetera, et cetera. So even though Edward tried his best to talk Doc into it, Doc stayed home. So when Edward got back, uh, Doc was in the lobby, uh, Doc said to Edward, what did the Pope say? And Edward said, without cracking a smile, 
Where's Sydney? Thanks, Doc.